Hi, I'm Joel, and this week on Engineering Roundtable, we're going to explore the world of cymatics. Cymatics is the process of visualizing sound. It began in the early 16 and 1700s when great scientists were beginning to understand acoustics. One of these scientists, Ernst Cladney, discovered that by taking a plate similar to this and sprinkling some sort of medium such as salt or sand upon it and stringing it with a bow that he would discover these very beautiful symmetrical patterns on the plate. The higher the frequency, the more complex the pattern he discovered. Decades after Ernst Cladney, another man by the names of Hans Yenny started playing around with cymatics. Using recent advancements in technology in the late 1960s and 70s, he was able to create experiments the likes of which had never been seen in the cymatics field. He would vibrate any medium he could get his hands on from water to sand. He used various sizes and shapes of plates to show that all of the factors play an important role in studying cymatics. Hans Yenny basically wrote the book on cymatics and all experiments that you see online today somehow stem from the creations he started in the 1960s. There's lots of information online about cymatics and there are tons of videos on YouTube and other sites that explore other people's DIY experiments. However, there is lacking information when it comes to building the actual tonoscopes that these people are using in their videos. So today I thought it would be nice to explore building your own tonoscope at home out of cheap materials that you can find anywhere. But first, let's dig deeper to find out what a tonoscope is and how it works. So here we have my first attempt at building a tonoscope. I simply found a piece of cut acrylic and glued it to a speaker and then hooked that up to an amplifier kit and then to a function generator. I was very pleased with the results and will now show you a tonoscope in action. So to begin, we're going to just pour some salt all over the plate. I recommend using salt and not sugar because sugar is sticky and gets everywhere. Searching through frequencies, I discovered a few base frequencies at which patterns definitely show up. Starting with the lowest, I discovered that 70 hertz on this particular plate gives us a nice circle, which we will see now. The next significant frequency I found was 180 hertz. After that, uh, the next shape really starts to appear at 340 hertz. And the last shape I managed to get out of this plate was around 470 hertz. Beyond that, it doesn't seem to be responsive, and there are many things to take into account. The speaker itself, the plate, the size, the thickness, the material it's made out of, all of these things factor into how well your shapes appear and how many you get out of each plate.
Now that we've seen a tonoscope in action, it's time to build our own. First, we have a speaker here harvested out of an old stereo. We have a nice SparkFun red box. We have the SparkFun audio amplifier kit. And we have the mini DDS function generator that we just recently added to our catalog. We also have our acrylic plate. I decided to go with a circle this time. We'll also need something to glue our plate to the speaker with. In my previous tonoscope, I used a plastic tube, and in here we're going to use just a typical bottle cap. Anything that has an open round end to fit over the cone of the speaker will work. And last but not least, some hot glue, my favorite tool. The first step is going to be identifying the middle of your plate. As I said, my plate is acrylic because we have access to scrap acrylic and the laser cutter here at SparkFun. I had the laser cutter cut a hole in the exact center of our circle here for easy identification. Precision is nice, but not entirely necessary. We're using a tack here to hold our cap in place. And we're gonna bust out the hot glue. While we let that dry, we're going to go ahead and set up our speaker in a box. I pre-measured the speaker diameter and drew a circle here for me to cut out. So I'm just going to take an X-Acto knife and start that. We're also going to cut a tiny hole in the back for the wires to come through. We're going to make some holes for screws. I'm going to tighten these down. The glue is dried here on our plate, and we now have our speaker in our box. Now comes combining the two. We're basically going to pour some hot glue around this guy, slap it on top of here, and we're going to use this level here to level it off before the glue dries. We'll put some around the speaker just for good measure. And we're going to let that dry. Now that we've seen cymatics in action and built our own tonoscope, let's dive a little deeper into the science behind cymatics. Cymatics involves visualizing sound, and sound is made up of waves. When we're hooking this up to a function generator, we're basically sending waves through the speaker and up through the plate. These are all stationary waves, and that's why we, we see these patterns forming, because the sound is coming from one set location, moving out through the plate that is free to vibrate. Back in Electronics 101, we learn about frequency and amplitude. Amplitude is how high your wave goes, and the frequency is how many periods you see in one given set of time. When we're visualizing these waves through our plates, the spots that the sand or salt collect in are the nodes of the wave. Say we have a sine wave. Each of these points here, where we cross the center point, is a node. All of these nodes are constant, and that's why the salt collects there and doesn't vibrate away. So as this wave changes in amplitude and continues to get smaller or larger, we see that the, the variation in vibration and change happens in all these anti-nodes but the nodal spots stay the same. And as we increase the frequency, we create more nodes, and thus we see more complex patterns with the increased frequencies. So the reason we chose to use a function generator is because it can create these waves. You can use both square waves and sine waves to create these amazing patterns. The sine waves are obviously a lot more smoother and have better visual transitions when you're changing frequencies versus a square wave, but both will produce patterns. So now we have our tonoscope built and we're ready to hook it up. First things first, uh, it's good to have a nice clean surface so that whatever medium you're visualizing sound through doesn't stick all over. So again, we're going to be using salt. And now we're going to start playing around. Uh, since this is the first time I'm turning this on, I don't know exactly which frequencies will produce visuals. But uh, based off of my discoveries with the square plate, we're going to play around with some of those frequencies. First, we're going to start pretty low, down around 40 hertz. And we're going to crank it up until we start to see a pattern. If 
we can see at about 180 hertz, we get a nice circle, which is about double the frequency it took to get a circle on the square plate. Now let's uh, keep cranking it up. Again, be sure to wear ear protection as it can get very loud very fast. So as you can see, the circle is a lot more challenging than the square plate. We have already increased our frequency up to 800 hertz before we started to see another pattern forming, and it's simply just another circle within the larger circle. The acrylic is much thicker than we used on the square panel, so that could be affecting it as well. So we're going to crank it up a little more and see if we can't get some more complex patterns out of this. So now we're up to 1800 hertz, and as we can see, we're just getting more circles within circles. Again, we're obviously still seeing patterns, but the square plate obviously produced much more amazing visuals than the circular plate. For more information on cymatics, I highly recommend checking out this book, entitled Cymatics by Hans Yenny. It explores all of the experiments he conducted throughout his life and delves deep into some philosophical sides as well. There's also a video that you can check out here entitled Bringing Matter to Life with Sound, which is a compilation video of the experiments found in this book. There's also a TED Talk that you can find here by a man named Evan Grant. Evan is exploring the current state of cymatics and trying to progress it as a scientific field. Aside from a tonoscope, a tool called the cymoscope exists that allows us to explore the world of cymatics even further, from graphing a lexicon of dolphin languages to studying the sounds and songs sung to us by the stars. You can learn more about it and the research conducted with it at cymoscope.com. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Engineering Roundtable, and if you're new to cymatics, I hope this was a good introduction for you. I look forward to seeing any experiments you guys conduct at home, and check back in two weeks for more Engineering Roundtable.